like to discuss with you uh, a short history of uh, telomeres and aging and cancer. Uh, in part because I'm convinced uh, that telomeres and telomerase are very important for uh, both aging and cancer. There's a lot of data, particularly recent data, to support uh, that we cannot overestimate the importance of, of telomeres and telomerase in, in aging and cancer. And secondly, because I, I really think that um, yeah, this, the, the notion that cells of the germline, so the cells that propagate the species, are better able to do that uh, and better protected in terms of genome stability, maintain telomeres, then cells of the soma is becoming more and more clear. I think in, uh, we have a tendency to, th to be human-centric, we th consider aging, but in biology it's not so much the individual that counts, but it's, 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 it's the molecules, DNA molecules, that, that manage to propagate. Okay, so let's go back to the history of telomeres a little bit. So in the 30s, um, Hermann Müller and Barbara McClintock found that there must be some, something special about the ends of chromosomes uh, in that they uh, were different from other parts of the genome, which could break. And um, so they, they, they did coined the term tel telomeres, and basically what telomeres exactly were remained a mystery for a long time. Uh, but then, of course, the next big thing was Watson and Crick discovered the structure of DNA. So now we, we, people knew what, what was in the, in the chromosomes. And then, I guess, uh, in the 60s, people discovered DNA polymerase, that it was kind of a, an enzyme which can only de replicate DNA in one direction. And then, actually, Olovnikov, a Russian scientist, and also Watson, realized that this unidirectional uh, mechanism of DNA replication posed a problem for replicating the ends of chromosomes. And they, actually, Olovnikov su suggested that maybe some cells would not be able to replicate and telomeres would get shorter and that that might actually play a role in aging. And that was actually way before its time. Because it took another two decades, so now we're talking the 80s, before the structure of telomeric DNA in mammalian cells was characterized, so that it, in particular G-rich uh, sequences, and before Liz Blackburn and Carol Greider and Jack Shostak discovered that telomeres were maintained by the enzyme telomerase which is a reverse transcriptase that can add telomer repeats to the ends of chromosome and thereby compensate for this loss of DNA, which is inev inevitable but with every cell division. Well, soon after, a whole flurry of papers, so in the early 90s, late 80s, demonstrated that the telomer length, the number of repeats at the ends of chromosome in somatic cells is typically shorter than what you see in the germline. So people looked at sperm, for example, there they found longer telomeres. And, and they suggested that maybe shortening of telomeres was indeed related to uh, the aging of cells. And in fact, uh, Cal Harley in the 90s showed that um, the fact that you can only pass its fibroblast for a finite number of times was directly linked to the shortening of telomeres. And in fact, uh, so the, the point was that these cells do not express or express very little telomerase. And as a result, telomeres get shorter up until the point when there's insufficient repeats for the end to look, uh, to distinguish itself from a double strand break. So if there's too many double strand breaks in the cell, then the cell will basically give up, die by apoptosis or become senescent. So that, those were important discoveries which were, which was still f uh, uh, indirect. Uh, there was no indirect or direct proof, but then, then people actually cloned and sequenced telomerase. So they, we're now we're talking mid nineties and show, and show that fibroblasts can be immortalized by putting this enzyme in. So because now telomeres were maintained and Rather than stopping after a finite number of divisions, these cells became immortal. So then the question is, why does telomer um, shortening occur? In uh, why is there not telomerase in all this in all our cells? Uh, and the, the notion that evolved, I would say, over the next two decades, is that the primary reason in long-lived species is that that it, telomer shortening acts like a tumor suppressor mechanism. So by putting a limit on the number of times cells can divide, it it becomes harder for a an aspiring tumor cell to become fully malignant. So it's an extra barrier for tumor growth. But uh, the paradox is that there's still some telomerase is, highly, is, is very much needed in stem cells. So people think about stem cells often and say, well, these cells have self renewal potential and they, uh, they express telomerase and it's just the somatic cells. But all the somatic stem cells, including the hemopoietic stem cells, um, they lose telomeres with each division, but they have some telomerase. And this telomerase is required, probably we think, to, to, to provide some repair of short telomeres. 
So the stem cells are able to deal with a limited number of short telomeres. But as, as, as soon as too many short telomeres arise, that cell will die. And then the a neighboring stem cell or another stem cell will have to take over. But of course, that cell will be forced into more cell division. So it's likely that it will also encounter this problem. So in fact, what we see in normal individuals is that what starts out as polyclonal hemopoiesis, so many stem cells driving blood cell formation, it becomes fewer and fewer. And interestingly, in patients that are haploinsufficient for telomerase, so they still have telomerase activity, but instead of having two active telomerase genes, they only have one gene, so the telomerase levels are half, and these patients often die before, their, before puberty because the stem cells run out. And what we think is happening there is that this repair function of telomerase is compromised. So too many ends occur which need fixing by telomerase. That doesn't happen, the, the cell dies, so the remaining stem cells have to divide. But there again, uh, the, the cell is likely to encounter this, this problem with telomeres. So you, you have a feed-forward loop that exhausts stem cells. And as a result, these people die from bone marrow failure. Interestingly, if people survive past puberty with very few stem cells, the main problem becomes pulmonary fibrosis. The same genetic defect giving rise to lung disease if patients are older than, 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 than 20 years old, but it's primarily a, a defect in, the, or lethal defect is bone marrow failure if they're younger. We don't understand how that works. But we do know that even tumor cells sooner or later need to uh, become immortal and um, replicate. Well, what, what's very clear on, on, in recent studies in, in the year 2012 until 2014 is that telomerase uh, is, is typically upregulated in cancers, typically either by amplification of the telomerase gene, the, the reverse transcriptase genes, or point mutations in the promoter of telomerase, which we now see in the majority of tumors. So it's, it, if you now ask the question, what's the most common genetic abnormality in cancer? It's in fact uh, mutations in the telomerase promoter, which allows higher levels, presumably, of telomerase, thereby allowing the tumor cells to divide following rearrangement of the genetic material. So this link between uh, telomerase and, and immortality is, uh, is, is important for cells of the germline, which are able to maintain uh, telomere length, but for the soma, it seems like it's, it's a better strategy is to limit uh, replicative potential and thereby prevent cancers. But cancers typically start using telomerase to become immortal. So I think uh, it's true what I started out by, uh, by saying is that the importance of telomeres and telomerase in both aging and cancer cannot be uh, overestimated. We, we really, at this point, don't know exactly how important telomere loss is in normal aging. But we know if people don't die from cardiovascular disease, and there might even be a telomerase or telomer component in, in the loss of endothelial cells there, or they don't die from cancer, they typically die from immunity. And we, we know that immune cells, particularly the T cells, show very dramatic shortening of telomeres as, as we get older. So it, it, for the future, we really need to understand how important telomeres are for aging and cancer and how we, how we can balance, because on the one hand, we would like to target telomerase in cancer cells and maybe extend the lifespan in normal cells, but without allowing cancer cells to flourish. So that is going to be a challenge that's going to be with us for the next uh, decade or two, I would imagine.